take a look at a standard normal distribution problem. We have a vending machine that's accepting coins, and what we have is a certain coin, it doesn't tell us what type, has a weight, the, the mean of 5.940, and a standard deviation of 0 0.075 grams. They do tell us that the weights are normally distributed, so they do follow that bell shape. And a vending machine is configured to accept coins with a weight between 5.820 and 6.06 .06 grams. So it's allowing some standard or some variation. So we want to look at um, what's going to be rejected essentially. Remembering that our average is 5.940. And it's going to reject anything below 5.820 or anything above 6.060. So that's going to be what it's going to reject or not accept for payment. We'll go ahead and just color those pink to make it clear. Now, there are several ways you can figure the area of this um, rejection region. You can use the process on page 209 to 211. This allows you to use the information, the mean, and the standard deviation to find a z-score, and then to look up on a reference table what the um, percentage is for each one. You would then subtract your two percentages to find the percent that are rejected. However, I'm going to go about this slightly differently because we have technology to help us out. If you're in my math lab, what you notice, and you'll notice the numbers for this problem are a little bit different because this is an actual homework problem, um, you have this button called Stat Crunch. So I'm going to go ahead and hit that button, Stat Crunch, and it's going to open up my Stat Crunch calculator. It looks something like this. It will pop up a window asking you if it's okay for the Java Applet to load, and it's perfectly okay. There's no viruses or anything in there. I'm going to hit the stat value, stat button, and look for a calculator, and we're using the normal distribution. So I'm going to move my stat crunch out of here and just bring my calculator back. Now I want to find out what's going to be rejected. It asks me to fill in a couple things. First off, the mean is given to me, 5.940, as is the standard deviation. I want to know, on the lower hand, what are less than 5.820? Anything less than 5.820 grams is going to be rejected. So I'm going to ask it to compute this value for me. And you'll see right here that it asks you to, um, asks you, or it gives you a picture. It looks kind of like my picture. And it gives you the value right here. So let's go ahead and write this down, maybe in red. Then I'm going to go ahead and do this again. My mean and standard deviation remain the same, but now I'm going to look at the other limit, 6.060. And it's actually reached not those than 6.060, but those greater than 6.060. So instead of the less than and equal to, I'm going to turn this to greater than or equal to. I'd hit compute. There I have my other area, and you notice they are the same, and it's because it's a symmetrical distribution. Now, depending on the values, that won't always happen, but this is, um, does happen because they do happen to be the same number of standard deviations away from the mean. So I'm going to go ahead and write that value down. And add the two of them together to get the um, proportion that are, that are rejected. So 0 0.0548 plus 0 0.0548 gives me about 10% of these are rejected, 10.96. I do have 250 coins being inserted into my vending machine, so we'll multiply by 250 and see that 27.4 or as it tells you to round to the nearest integer, about 27 are rejected.
Now for part B of this problem, we have a little bit more information, and excuse the red, let's see if I can get this slash out of here, there we go. Um, we have 250 coins are inserted into the vending machine. What is the probability that the mean of these coins, so if I were to pull all 250 coins out of this vending machine and weigh each individually, what's the probability that the average is in between these two limits? And we're actually going to do something very similar, except now we have to find a new standard deviation because this uses what's called the central limit theorem and it asks us to look at the distribution of the mean not the individual coins so to find a new uh, standard deviation all I'm going to do is take my old standard deviation 0 0.075 and divide by the square root of how many coins I have now I have 250 coins making the square root 15.81. So I'm going to go ahead and divide. and get a new standard deviation of 0 0.00. .00 four seven. Let's get my decimal in there. All right, now I'm going to go back to my stat crunch and get that calculator back up again. And I'm going to use the same mean five point nine four zero. Oh, hold on. Let's type this in, 5.940. But now for my standard deviation, I have 0 0.0047. Now let's take a look what we want this to calculate. We want to know what is the probability that the mean is in between these two values. And there's a couple of ways you can approach this, but I'm going to do the less than for both of these, and we'll just subtract them. So we'll compute it for the first range, Then we'll do it for the second one. Now you'll notice the values here, because the problem is made up, gave me a 1 for the second time, or the 6.060, and a 0 for the second one. That's fine. Whatever two values they give you, you want to subtract the largest minus the, sm or the smallest from the largest to give you, in this case, a probability of 1, or certain it's going to occur. So just remember, you want to work the less than for both of these. And then you want to do the biggest one, 1, minus the smallest one, 0. And be sure you change that standard deviation to reflect the standard normal distribution.